Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about um, <coughs> arrays and specifically a one-dimensional static array. So all an array is is a variable that can hold multiple pieces of, of information. So we saw before that when you declare a variable like this, dim x as integer, you could then assign to it like x is equal to 34. But an array is, is better than that, well in some sense a little bit, because it can hold multiple pieces of data. So, meaning if you didn't want to just put one number in this variable, x is equal to 34, what if you had 100 numbers? Well, do you want to declare 100 variables like this? Um, you wouldn't want to, so that's what an array is, is used for. So you could do something like this, dim, uh, and I'm going to put B team here, and I'm going to put in parentheses the size of the array. So initially an array really doesn't look different, I, I just have the name of the array, but the thing that makes it different is putting a size, so I put 4 as integer. So there I just declared an array, and I'm going to get rid of this normal variable, um, and we're going to talk about arrays now. So here I declared an array. It's an array of integers because the type is as integer. And the only thing different that you've probably never seen before, or maybe you have, is this right here in parentheses. So this is the size of the array. And the size of this array is 5. It's not 4. And the reason that it's uh, 5 is that because arrays are composed of elements. And um, the elements in an array start at index 0, meaning if I have five people who play basketball, like here's my basketball team variable, my five guys who play basketball, um, I could numerate them going like this, uh, you know, you're number one, you're number two, number three, you're number four, you're number five. And I would start at one and go to five. But that's not how arrays work in VBA. Arrays in VBA start at index 0. So if I was looking at my five guys who play basketball, I would say, you're number zero, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four. And that gives me, the size of my team is going to be five, but the index uh, that I'm starting at is going to be zero. So that's a key concept uh, with arrays is, what is the base index? So when you see something like this, declared just like this, it means the base index is zero, so your size is going to be one more than what you see in parentheses. And uh, let's work with this a little bit. So now we can assign a value to um, one element or all elements of our array. So let's say I have my five guys who play basketball. I'm going to give the first guy a number of 23, Michael Jordan. And now I'm going to give numbers to the rest of the team. Um, so the second guy who's, who's now number indexed at number one, this is called the index inside the parentheses. I'll give him 33. And then I'm going to go down. So now I'm just going to put some random numbers in here. Okay, so here's my five, five guys who play basketball. But notice that the index goes from 0 to 4. So that's what, again, base index 0 means. It just means um, if I have five elements, where do I start counting at? Do I start counting at 1 or do I start counting at 0? That's what the index is all about. So now we could step through this and take a look in memory and see uh, what's going on here. So I declared my array up here of size 5 and now I'm assigning var uh, variables to each element. So if I step through, um, we'll go down to the watch window and there's a little tree now because you have an array variable you, you tree into the multiple elements. So you can see I have my five elements. They're, they start at index zero and they go to four. And all the values are now in memory, in the computer's memory. And they have a type of integer. Okay, so they're all integers. So that just shows you that an array um, is a variable. In, the, in our case, it's called B team. And it holds five uh, distinct uh, elements that are also integers. And here they are, okay? So that is an array. And that's what they're good for. They hold uh, loads and loads of data. Um, and arrays can be huge. They could be thousands. They, you could have a thousand element array, uh, two thousand element array, or whatever you want. So um, back to this indexing issue. Uh, what if, you know, Excel VBA gives you an option. You don't have to start at index zero. 
you can do something like this. Um, you can declare your array like this, from 1 to 5. If I do it like that, that means my base index is no longer 0. It's now 1. Okay. So I'm going to move this down, and I'm just going to put number 5 here. Because now, now my base starts at 1, and I go to 5. I still have 5 elements, but I just changed that where the initial uh, indexing starts. Now it starts at 1. And two points here. Uh, this this uh, number here is called the lower bound of the array and it is the lowest index of the array and this uh, number here is called the upper bound of the array and it's the, the, the maximum index of the array so um, that's what th that, th that's an option for you if you don't want to uh, use index 0 you can use index 1 and you could do it like this and another way you could do index one is um, you could put at the very top of your code option base one and if you do that then you don't need to put this one two because by uh, when you do that option base one Excel knows that it's gonna start at base one and it's gonna go to five so you still have five elements here and and that's how option base one works so it just saves you the time of doing this one two because with option base one now the computer knows that every array starts at one so if we run this again you know we're still gonna get what we got before actually let me just run through only now our index in memory starts at one not zero we still have the same values and they're all integers so just working with the index it's an option it's it's you know, do you want to work with option base one or do you want to work with base zero? I usually work with base zero. I don't usually do this, but it's up to you. It's totally up to you. Okay, so now we have our array and let's try to assign, let's try to print it out on the, uh, on the worksheet. So how we can do that is doing something like this. For index is equal to um, the lower bound of the array to the upper bound of the array so these are functions here these are called functions so these are called functions L bound and U bound are functions in VBA they're VBA functions you don't need to write them and they take in an array and they spit out for lower bound it's going to give you the minimum index and for upper bound it's going to give you the maximum index so in this case L bound is going to be is going to be uh, 1 and U bound is going to be 5 so let me just do something real quick uh, dim LB LBND as integer and then LBND I'm just going to show you that that's what it's doing is is returning this value I'll do the same thing for you for the upper bound. Now normally you wouldn't write these lines here because you know that it's you know what it's going to do but initially okay I'll show you that these functions return a number. Okay, so let's step through this and right here L bound what's the lower bound of the array B team? Well, let's take a look. It's going to be if I do a watch here it's going to be one you see that L bound is one and U bound if I do a watch on that let me just do a watch real quick U bound is five so that's what we expected right that's all these functions do is is they're gonna return the lowest index and the highest index and so now we can do a loop a for loop and we start at index which is equal to one and we're gonna go up to five what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the value in cells index comma one dot value is going to be equal to B team. It's going to be index. So here's how you reference a value of, of an array. You put the array name and then some number. Well, in our case, you know, we want to loop through. So we need a variable here. And index initially is going to be one. So we're going to have B team one. And we're going to put that in the cell 
uh, which is going to be 1 initially, because remember, L bound is 1, and we're going to put in column 1. Row 1, column 1 is cell A1. So what you're going to see is that here in A1, we're going to be starting to put the value of the array, which will be this first number up there. I think it's 33. And then we're going to go to the next index. So when it comes to this line, next index, um, index will become 2, and then we'll have cells 2, 1, so we're going to go to A2 is equal to B, B team element number 2, which will be 11 here. So let's uh, step through this and see what we get. Sure enough, we have 33 uh, going up into cell A1. Now index uh, is 2, so we have in the second row, we have the second element, and now we're going to go into the third row, third element, so we're going to have 25 there, and then we're going to go into the fourth row, fourth element, and the fifth row, fifth element. So that's all this does. Um, it just loops through the array from the lower bound to the upper bound, and it puts it in cells. Um, that's all it does. And one more thing is that you can also, you know, if you wanted to do this in instead of option base 1, if you wanted to do it in option base 0, you can. Uh, you can just change, you know, now I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's my, this is a size 5, now I'm going to erase this option base 1. So now if I do it, um, I'm going to loop through the array again. One thing I have to change here is that index on the first time around is going to be zero because the lower bound now is going to be zero and there is no row zero so I have to put index plus one. So let me put that index plus one here. So now if I do this I'm going to be working in option base zero and notice that I didn't need to assign uh, beat the element zero at the very top. You could assign them in any order. So now let's look at the lower bound. Well, the lower bound is 0, and the upper bound is 4 here in memory on the watch window. And now we're just going to loop through. Uh, let me let me erase these before we print. So now we're going to loop through. And let's see. I just want to move this down a little bit. So now we're going to loop through, and we're going to see that we get the same answer that we got before. Well, it's a little different because I changed the index here to 23 to account for that, but um, you're, you're doing the same thing. With base 0, you're doing the same thing. Uh, I have five elements in my array, and I'm looping through them. Whether it's base 0 or base 1, this loop does the same thing, and then it falls out of the loop after index 5. Okay? So... Um, that's all I wanted to show you about these arrays and once again this is called a one-dimensional array because it's you could think of it as a row of data or a column of data um, whichever you want to it's just a single row think of it as a single row of data um, later on we'll talk about arrays that can be uh, rows and columns so you could have an array that's something like this not just a single row it could be a single row uh, up to seven elements but then columns up to like 10 or whatever however however big you want um, you could make your array uh, like that it could be a two to, that's called a two-dimensional array and then you could even go further you could do three-dimensional four-dimensional whatever usually you don't go past uh, two though so that's all I wanted to say about arrays uh, remember go to excel VBA .com if you want to watch the videos and download the files thanks